We all love clean code, fast algorithms, no bottlenecks, uh, you know. However, usually the first place your application can crash due to performance reasons is rarely in the code, but in the assets you use. You start your work as a Unity dev. You work with a talented artist, you drag and drop whatever he sends you into the project, you build a 3D scene, add some behavior to it, you press build and shock. It doesn't work. Or worse, it only works on your desktop, but someone tried to run it on his 5 years old mobile phone and said it doesn't work. What do you do? Your code is just a couple of lines, it can be that much. Here are some metrics you should first look at and what measures of prevention you can take from the start so you can be safe. What is a 3D model? A bunch of arrays of attributes, some animations and a few textures. The arrays of attributes are stuff like positions, triangle indices, UV coordinates, normals, vertex colors and so on. Each array is sent to the GPU and processed by the code there for each frame that is displayed in your game. So first we have polycount. Vertex number and faces should be as low as possible, although you can go pretty high depending on the platform. To keep your rendering performance good, I would recommend staying under a million vertices visible at once in the scene. Maybe a bit more, but that's it. In a 3D model, every edge should either bring some shape or be there for animation deformation purposes. Otherwise, it's just useless there, so the best way to optimize this is just to have a good topology on your 3D models. One other way you could do this is by using level of details, but there's a catch. More level of details means more 3D models, so more memory occupied by your project, and more work for the artist. One other smart way of doing this is object cooling. You can cull objects that are out of the camera, too close to the camera, too far to the camera, and most interestingly you can do occlusion cooling, hiding objects that are occluded by other objects. This helps your rendering time, but again, you need more memory for this. Wanna go the extra mile? Make sure you do not export useless attributes, vertex colors when you have a texture and so on. One extra tip is using something like Draco Compressing for GLTF, which can save you a ton of space in exchange for some processing time. Draw calls. Unfortunately, it's not only important how high poly a 3D model is. GPU is fast, CPU is smart but slower. Communication between them should be as low as possible. One way you will lag your app is by increasing your draw calls. Just a few hundred draw calls can lag your application, so that's not great. For each 3D mesh you have in the scene, the CPU makes a draw call to the GPU. One easy way of improving this is by merging your 3D models, especially if they're static. Unity also allows for draw call batching. For this you'll need to share materials since only same material objects can be batched. You also make draw calls for lights. Lights are expensive, use them sparingly and bake as much as you can. Good news though, particles only use one draw call in most cases. Textures. Textures are a bit more obvious to spot as a problem, they usually occupy more memory than a 3D mesh, so it's a more visible pain point. Most mobiles don't support textures bigger than 4K anyway, but you should keep them as low as possible. Maybe in your game you won't see a difference with lower resolution textures. Different formats, different sizes, same look. I use JPEG for most textures, PNG for transparency. You can reuse channels for grayscale textures in some engines, so you can even put free maps inside one. You can crunch even more these numbers with image optimizations. For the web, for instance, you can use TinyPNG to crunch down the numbers a lot with low visible effects. Be careful though, as normal maps are more sensitive to changes than other maps. Keep your resolution in powers of 2. This will allow for a better compression algorithm to be used and to allow MIP mapping. Sprites. Sprites are just textures, so most things we just discussed apply. A few things to take care of though. If the sprites are small, or frames in the same animation, bunch them together into an atlas or a sprite sheet. Remember draw calls. 
Before doing a frame by frame animation, maybe you can consider 2D rigging. This could save you a lot of space, it's easier to store some numeric values rather than a dozen of images after all. GIFs seem like a solution, but they usually are huge in size. Videos are better in this case than GIFs. Sometimes videos are even better than frame by frame animation when we talk about high resolution and long time. Not the go to solution due to performance reason, but have that in mind. Time's almost up, so here are a few extra tips. Just like lights, shadows are expensive. Shadow mapping is basically a new render from the perspective of our light. You can bake those as well. Reflections are heavy, but you can reduce your bounce numbers or even bake them into a reflecting cube map. Post processing can also be heavy, approach with care. On your assets, keep faces a bit distance from each other so you don't have something called Z-fighting. Name and parent everything properly inside your models. And please normalize rotation, scale and position before exporting. No one likes to guess scales. So that's it, please comment if you have other life-saving tips and of course like, subscribe, you know how it goes. Other interesting links on this matter are in the description and see you next time.